Ma'am, can you state your name for the record? Lynette Roach. Lynette, how do you know Matthew? I am Matthew's aunt. Approximately how far did you live from uh, where Mr. Milby was residing with his mother? Four blocks. And how long have you known Mr. Milby? Since the day he was born. And are you related to his mother or his father? His father. You've heard the testimony of Ms. Bondi and Ms. Wilson, <clears throat> is that correct? Yes, I have. And did you witness domestic violence between his parents, with Matthew's parents? Yes, I did. And how frequently was this? I witnessed, witnessed it three days a week, approximately three days a week that I physically saw it going on. Um, I also have um, friends who live directly across the street who would call me daily about what they were seeing across the street, on the corner, on the sidewalk. Was Matthew present when you witnessed the domestic violence? Yes, he was. Can you just give us an example of what that looked like? Sure. Um, Julie and Matt, uh, Matt Sr would be arguing, um, fighting, yelling at each other. Um, Julie would be spitting on um, Matt Sr., my brother, uh, hitting him. Uh, my brother would never fight back. He would never lift a hand, which I think was probably very confusing for Matthew Jr., who was observing all of this, wondering why somebody wouldn't fight back when they're being hit on spit on, yelled at constantly. Um, so he, it was definitely witnessed. Did he ever go to you for help? Matthew came to my house. As I said, we lived uh, four blocks away. And my sons, um, his cousins, they were very close. And he would come to my house. Um, I called it to hide out. When things were going on, when they were fighting, he would come to my house to get away and when he would get there I knew it would be about five or ten minutes before um, there would be a knock at the door which would uh, be Julie looking for Matthew wanting him to come back home and I would tell Matthew to go to the back bedroom um, we would hide him in the closet it was very hard to feel like I could do nothing other than not open the door. Uh, if I didn't open the door, I knew, you know, she would leave. Um, she was always driving. My brother was usually sitting in the front seat, um, saying nothing and doing nothing. And she would come back, banging on the door, and I would just tell her he was not there. And I would hide him. You lied to her? Absolutely because I was feared for his safety. She was crazy. Did you contact the police? I went to, uh, I, I called the police many, many, many times. I did welfare checks at that house. I called the state's attorney's office, who did return my call. Um, their victim's impact coordinator is who they had called me back. And I talked to them for a long time about the things that were going on at that house, my concerns. I talked to Officer McCoy, who my last conversation with him was, if somebody doesn't start taking my phone call seriously, and I asked them all to be logged, please log this phone call, that something bad was going to happen down at that house. And I'm sorry that nobody listened. Yes, I did. Matthew was a very outgoing. As his sister said, he was in sports. He had a lot of friends. He uh, loved skateboarding. Him and my, my son, uh, who also was in that graduating class and in that gym, would skateboard together all the time. He was very outgoing, very pleasant. And then it changed. He became very withdrawn. He wasn't coming over for family gatherings. Um, at Christmas, one time his mother sat outside the house in the car. 
He was allowed to come in with his dad to get his gift and then they had to leave. Um, he started not coming over. He would stay up in his room when I would go down to check on my brother. Um, he would not come down. He was very withdrawn. He uh, was no longer contacting his friends. Thank you very much. I have no further questions. Mr. Boone, any questions? No questions, sir. You may step down, ma'am. Thank you very much.